Joining me today in the Kappa the TV show, uh, Jake Evans. He's a U.S. candidate for Congress in Georgia State. Uh, how are you, Jake? I'm doing great. It's good to join you today. This is what you tweeted, and it was like uh, a controversial thing. On my first day in Congress, I will move uh, to fully defund Biden's radical disinformation board. How are you going to do that and why? Absolutely. Well, you look at what's happening in Elon Musk. Uh, just recently purchased Twitter, uh, which is a large social media platform and, and large parties doing it to make sure that we've got free speech and, and that conservative voices uh, like myself are not being censored. Uh, and then I don't think coincidentally around the same week, uh, Joe Biden, and it appears to be uh, acting as a, a puppet of uh, Barack Obama, uh, administers what I will call the Ministry of Truth, which is eerily similar to George Orwell's 1984 novel. Uh, and that is, in my opinion, a blatant attempt to further censor uh, conservative voices and filter through through a, a government apparatus uh, what conservatives are saying. I think that's a, a big problem. Uh, so we've got to make sure uh, as Republicans and as Americans that the First Amendment uh, is fully protected. We've got to make sure that any attempts uh, to censor or suppress speech uh, does not have the funding uh, to go forward. And I'll take all attempts to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. Another tweet, uh, you caused a big controversy. Controversy. Uh, this was you wrote, um, only females should be allowed to participate in women's sports. This is about women's safety and preserving the integrity of sports. It's common sense. Can you explain more? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, here in the U.S., we've got uh, many, many uh, organizations which are furthering and allowing um, women to or men to participate in women's sports. And I will tell you, I played sports my whole life. Uh, team sports are a way to build perseverance or a way to build endurance or a, a way to build character. Uh, and we have to 100 uh, percent ensure that women's sports are protected, are sustained and allowing men who are biologically different, uh, who do have higher testosterone percentages to participate in women's sports will destroy them. And it'll take away a very important part uh, of a young woman's life and development. And that's something we cannot let happen. Uh, and I will be very, very strong on my stance against allowing men to participate in women's sports. Amazing. According to the Atlanta Journal Constitution, Republican candidate Jake Evans uh, in Georgia 6 recently promoted a menu of unfounded, dangerous, dangerous conspiracy theories about the 2020 elections being stolen. You said uh, there was a widespread election fraud, particularly when it came to absentee ballots. Uh, how can you reply to this such of uh, such accusations and uh, you said the Democrats were known to cheat in every election. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that's just that, that's the establishment liberal media just attacking a perspective that they, they don't want to hear. Uh, the reality was in 2020, uh, there was widespread fraud. And, and I know it firsthand. I'm an election lawyer. I litigated a, an election contest case uh, in Georgia. We found people that voted twice in elections. We found folks that didn't even sign their absentee ballots. And those votes were cast. Those are illegal votes. Those are fraudulent votes. I, I've litigated all the way before the United States Supreme Court through the trial courts, through the appellate courts uh, to ensure only legal votes would be counted. Uh, and there was fraud up in Pennsylvania as well. There should have been an audit in Georgia. There should have been a mechanism through which we could have evaluated these ballots and seen which ballots were illegal. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, but the, that was an attack by the AJC against the fact that they don't want to hear uh, and, and a way to, to further suppress conservative voices. But, but I'm not going to have any of it. I'm going to keep fighting for what I believe in and fighting for election integrity like I've been doing. Academic studies uh, said uh, indicate that the demographics of uh, state of Georgia, Georgia are making it more liberal and it's like a Democratic Party leaning. Do you agree on that? No, I think Georgia is still a red state. I think that we have to make sure uh, that we further the principles that made America the greatest country on earth. At the end of the day, Americans of all types uh, want a flourishing, come on, a, commu a flourishing economy. They want safe communities. They want safe borders. They want secure elections. Uh, they want to make sure that America maintains 
uh, its dominance as the greatest country on earth. And the way that we do it uh, is that we get conservative principles back into execution and full operation. We make sure that our police are fully funded. We make sure that our border agents are fully supported. We make sure that we've got free market principles like lower taxes, less regulation. Uh, what that will create is a strong economy, just like we had under President Trump, uh, which brought forth uh, four of the best years in American history and definitely we've had in decades. And I think that will bring uh, conservatives uh, and Democrats, moderates of all types uh, to vote the right way. And that is Republicans to make sure that we can get this country back on track. Mm -hmm. Let's see your point of views on foreign policy. Uh, you are a big supporter of America first. How this will deal uh, with China? Sure. Well, listen, China is not playing by fair rules. They don't play by fair rules from an environmental standpoint. They uh, effectively release the most CO2 emissions um, as compared to any country in the world. Uh, they don't play fair based upon trade. Uh, they heavily subsidize their, their uh, companies by allowing them uh, to reach price points that no American company can ever reach. That undercuts um, American companies, allows them to gain market share in the United States. And that's the reason why tariffs are necessary and important uh, because that evils, that equals evens the playing field and, and ensures that American companies and workers have the opportunity to equally succeed. Uh, and we also have to understand China is an increasingly aggressive country that is seeking to become the most powerful country on the planet Earth. And if America does not uh, fight back and hold them accountable, uh, then we could be in a very dangerous global position. Mm -hmm. About the relation with Iran or the negotiations in Vienna and uh, the willingness of this administration to go back to GCPOA, what is your opinion here? Well, I think the Iranian deal was an awful deal. I don't think that we should re-enter it. I think that um, the United States has the strength of position and that we need to lean on that. But continuing to show weakness, as Joe Biden has done in the first year and a half of his administration, is not only endangering the United States, it's endangering the world. Uh, so we have to use our leverage, our power, our muscle. Uh, to make sure that we're not entering bad deals. We're not empowering our enemies. Uh, and that's something I feel very, very strongly about. Mm. Do you think that this administration is losing ties with its allies in the Middle East, especially Saudi Arabia and UAE? There was a, a long time ago, uh, for decades, a big, big uh, collaboration in war on terrorism. What, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you see that? Well, I think all of our allies, uh, they want to know that people are going to come through whenever they are needed. Um, I think many people sense weakness in Joe Biden. Putin was a perfect example. He knew this was his, his opportunity. Uh, if he was ever going to take Ukraine, it was going to be under Joe Biden and his weak administration. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't do this under Donald Trump. Uh, he didn't invade Ukraine under Donald Trump. He did it as soon as uh, Biden got into power, and we have to reinvigorate a peace through strength mentality and perspective across the planet. And we do that with strong leadership, strong conservative leadership. And that's exactly what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, Anthony Blinken apologized for the Crown Prince of uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, about uh, being late in reconsidering the Houthis on the FTO list. Uh, do you think that this organization uh, shouldn't be removed at the first place? Well, listen, President Trump did the right thing. He had the Houthis on the FTO list. Uh, I do think they're a terrorist organization. I think we need to hold them accountable. So any action that is contrary to what President Trump did in this situation, uh, I do not support. I think it endangers the United States and it also endangers our, our allies. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, following the news, Ambassador Olson, he's a former uh, um, U.S. ambassador to Pakistan. He agreed to plead guilty in the accusation of uh, lobbying uh, for the government of Qatar uh, in a legal manner. Uh, how do you see that? Mm -hmm. Why that hap is happening? We've got to get special interest in their control uh, on our the D.C. apparatus out of D.C. And this is a perfect example where it's happened. There are too many politicians that go to D.C., stay there for decades, 
uh, get ingrained into the swamp, fold the special interests, fold in order to these these payoffs. Joe Biden and Hunter Biden are a perfect example of this. Uh, and we cannot have any place of foreign actors coming in and influencing our form of government. And for that for that matter, we can't have domestic folks uh, influencing our form of government. We got to have a new generation of unafraid conservative fighters that aren't going to kowtow, that aren't going to fold, that's going to stand up for conviction and not special interest. And that's exactly what I'm all about. And that's how we get this the United States back on track. And I, I'm very proud to say that if I'm blessed enough to get to Congress, that will be what uh, I fight for first and foremost. Mm, do you think you will, you will win? The Republicans will get back in power in the midterm elections? Yeah. Yes, uh, I will. I, I'm I'm going to win my race. Uh, that will flip a district blue to red, and that will be one pickup for Republicans in 2022. Uh, also, the Republicans are going to take back the House, and they're going to take back the House because if you look at Joe Biden, his radical agenda is destroying America. Uh, he is indoctrinating our children. He's devaluing our currency. Inflation is at record highs. He's endangering our communities with open borders. Uh, and these are all issues that Americans are seeing front and center that are hitting their bottom line, hitting their kitchen table. And, and as a result of those awful results, uh, folks of all types are f- uh, flipping back because we Republicans did not win in 2020. 2020 some elections. I think there was massive fraud, so we'll never truly know. But those people are coming back. and We're going to retake our country. I'm very proud uh, to say that. And I'll be fighting to make sure that happens. Uh, during the Trump administration, uh, we witnessed an, uh, a big achievement. Israel signed with four countries like uh, Abraham Accord agreements. And this agreement is uh, really uh, effective. It's like people to people communications. So how do you see this? Yeah. Well, the Abraham Accords, listen, they they brought in an innovative thinking, an outside the box thinking and delivered a great result. They brought peace to the Middle East. Jared Kushner, uh, he led the charge on this. He made sure that we were coming forward with a very complex problem with new solutions, uh, not these government bureaucrats that have been in the swamp for decades trying to do the same thing over and over again. He brought new perspective. He brought new ideas and he delivered phenomenal results, results that people never thought could even be achieved. Uh, and that's the type of thinking that we need in D.C. We need new ideas, new vigor, new generation of folks. That's what, as I've said, I'm all about making sure that we are not doing the same old, same old, electing the same old perennial candidates to bring forward new folks, new ideas, new youth, new vigor. Uh, and so I think it was great for the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Jake Evans, thank you for your time. Uh, uh, best of luck. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Glad to join you today. Thank you. Hey, Maria Malouf here. Please click to like and subscribe to Maria Malouf TV YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.